Welcome back! It's time to play some more Metroid. When we last left off, our legs were encased in a sphere of unknown composition. Wish I had a little more information for you on that. But, scan data won't be around for another 16 years. Now, today's mission is item collection. In fact, that's going to be the mission most days, because there are only three bosses to go kill in all of Metroid. Fortunately, there's plenty of stuff to grab and plenty of things to break, like that poor little Zoomer's mind. He just can't handle the thought of not having a surface to run on and spins endlessly throughout space. Now today we're going to be collecting items in Norfair. The blue and sometimes orange rocky area that we're in right now is Brinstar. In addition, there's Norfair, the place we're going, which is filled with fire, bubbles, and nastiness, and Turian which is filled with Metroids, Lava, and Nastiness. To get there, we go back to the same area where we picked up our first missiles, and also where we first saw those warp pipes that constantly spit out enemies. Now there's a classic Metroid recharge trick that people sometimes like to use, and that is standing in front of these pipes and endlessly killing enemies until they drop stuff, collecting it, and then repeating. That trick is lame, and we're not going to be having any of it in this LP. However, what shooting them is good for, and in fact making them drop stuff is good for, is that if you shoot one of the enemies that comes out of the warp pipe, and it drops something, as long as you don't collect that, and until it disappears from the screen, a new enemy cannot spawn from that pipe. That horrible, dissonant chiptune means that we're in Norfair. Norfair is far more dangerous than Brinstar. In addition to the lava, which is practically everywhere, those red things on the ground will fire out fireballs at you. In addition, the swooping enemies do a lot more damage here. But now that we've picked up a second missile tank, we can much more easily dispatch them. For the purple and red enemies that swoop down on you, I highly recommend just unloading missile into them. Now when you, we got down off of the elevator, you could see that there were two ways to go, left and right. I chose left, even though it's a dead end, because it lets us pick up two missiles early on. And I do like pumping missiles into things. Now when I say early missiles, I mean early in terms of how long we've been playing the game versus how many missiles we're holding. Not early as in, oh, I'm getting these missiles before I'm supposed to. Because the beautiful thing about the original Metroid is that there really isn't any sense of before or after or when you're supposed to get something. It's a very non-linear, open-ended, user-defined experience. And right now I'm defining it as the experience of picking up five more missiles. As a result of that, it turns out that not all of the items that you can pick up in the game are necessary. In fact, not even all of the suit upgrades are necessary. I mentioned last time that there is a deadly secret to the long beam. And that deadly secret is... It's completely unnecessary. You don't need it at all. In fact, there are only a few items that are actually needed to complete the game. For one, you need missiles. In fact, you need a significant number of missiles. Two, you need the Ice Beam. Even if you didn't have to fight any Metroids at the end, which, spoilers, you do, it's a Metroid game, you would need the Ice Beam to perform the sequence break that's required to get you there. Further, you also need the bombs because the particular sequence break you need to use to get to the end, even if you don't want to play the rest of the game, involves bomb jumping off of a frozen enemy that you have to sneak into a room where it isn't supposed to be in the first place. Oh, and you need the morph ball because otherwise you can't get out of the first screen of the game. Now there's a bit of a trick to hitting these swooping enemies, and you might be familiar with it, if you've played Space Invaders before. Because it's basically the exact same thing that I tell someone who's having trouble hitting the last alien in a level of Space Invaders. You have to shoot at where they're going to be, not 
at where they are right now. And in this game, that's a bit easier to do because you can actually manipulate the way that the enemies swoop. Now, the swooping enemies have two attack patterns. One where they just swoop down at you, and one where they swoop down and just keep on swooping. Until you jump. So, the trick is, if one comes down, and it keeps on coming at you and isn't going to let up until it hits you, arm your missiles, jump and fire at the same time. Missiles fly fast enough that as long as you're about a quarter to half a screen away from the enemy, you'll be able to nail him with the missile. Now I skipped a door up there in order to come down to this area. You know what that sound means. It's time to get another upgrade. This time it's the high jump boots, which increase our jumping distance to 150% of the general jumping distance. That's 1.5 times your regular jumping distance. It's not necessary, but it's pretty cool, and it helps open up some more avenues for exploration. So, the next thing it's going to let us get is the Ice Beam. But I'm still not going to go in here, because I want the Ice Beam first before I go in there. Now, one of the other interesting things about how non-linear the game is, is that at this point, I could have already had the Ice Beam. I could have had the Ice Beam shortly after I got the bombs. But, I don't feel like doing it that way. I'm a bit of a rebel like that. So, I'm going to pick up the Ice Beam here. What's that? What do you mean by the Ice Beam here? Where else could there be an Ice Beam? Well, there's also one in Brinstar. In fact, there are two Ice Beams in the game. Unlike the Metroid game starting with Super Metroid, you can only carry one beam at a time. If you pick up a different beam, for example, the Wave Beam, your previous beam will, poof, vanish. This can be problematic because you need the Ice Beam if you want to fight Metroids, because otherwise you can't harm them at all. So, the developers did two things. First, they put two Ice Beams in the game so that even if you get one and then pick up the Wave Beam, you'll be able to find another one and switch back. And the other thing they did was make the Ice Beam, well, make the beams that you pick up uh, regenerate after you've picked them up. So even if you never find the other Ice Beam, you can just go pick up the same one you picked up the first time around. Now whether or not people will think of doing that, that is another story entirely. To get to the Ice Beam, we make that little jump up there, break through the ceiling, and go through this chamber that contains more missiles. We're kind of rolling in them now. There's plenty of missiles involved for if I just want to go crazy and start blowing everything up. Now this method to get the Ice Beam is different than it is in Metroid Zero Mission. Metroid Zero Mission, you go into a lower door that doesn't have any sh you know, shenanigans in it, and just pick up the Ice Beam, and then you have to come up here by demoing the Ice Beam, and come out on top and through some crackle blocks that replace the blocks that we broke up through. Instead, we're going to fall down here and see that the lava has morphed into a pool of Phazon. I don't think that's supposed to happen. And now, we're actually in the Ice Beam Chamber. But the item music isn't playing, because we didn't come into it from the front. And I'll explain more about why that happens later. But for now, let's break in through the back of the treasure room and claim our prize. And with that, we have the Ice Beam which gives us the incredible power to freeze anything, even the video.